Hello and what is going on? I'm L Director. This is L Director Vision, and you're watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. Today we're going to do another breakdown video, and uh, mostly because most of the techniques we're going to look at in this particular shot I've already shown before in other videos, and I don't want to be repeating myself. But we will take a look at a few uh, really cool things, and uh, let's take a look at our final shot. So let's go and pause here for a second. At first glance, there's nothing super remarkable about it. It's just a, a beautiful looking shot, uh, looking down a river. You got a duck, you got mountains and fog, this like beautiful mystic fog and that kind of a thing. Except none of this was actually here when we shot it for real. In fact, I can show you here on a before and after. This is what the shot originally looked like and then this is how it looks after we get done doing all the effects to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we pull something like this off. Oh, not Blender. So this is the, the final node graph for it. And uh, we'll go ahead and make this up to number one. We'll pan down so we can take a look and we will scale to fit. So here's the original shot. And the first thing I wanted to do is actually start with adding the fog. So that was literally the first thing I did. But for the sake of looking at this, because we need to start from the background and work our way forward, we can see that the first thing we did is add a mountain in the background because that mountain did not exist again here's the before there's the after so we went ahead and we added the mountain into the shot in fact when I actually showed this shot to my wife for the first time she goes oh so you added the the mist I said yeah and I added the duck in the mountain she goes no the mountains always been there I said oh really and I showed her the original shot she's like oh wow you fooled me so I fooled an effects artist wife Essentially, you know, that's, so that's kind of cool. So we're gonna add the mountain. There's nothing super fancy about it I've shown how to do sky replacements and uh, set extensions and all that kind of stuff in the past before It's literally just an image of a mountain that I cleaned up in Photoshop took the uh, the sky out And I ran it through a tracker I've got my tracker node right here And if we look at what the trackers seeing you can see that I tracked these trees in the background back here just because they were good distant points uh, for tracking the shot. Let's go and scale it back to fit. The other thing I had to do, of course, was create a mat out of the image in order to cut out the trees. Now, remember, when we do our sky and background emplacements, this image is actually being laid on top. If I hover over here where it comes in, you can see it is the foreground. Okay, so this is skies being placed on top of the image using some blend modes. And then we have to cut out the foreground from it, and that's how we're able to get pretty good edges without a whole lot of halo. So I got a little bit of halo and, and crunching on this shot, but with how wide the shot was, I knew it wasn't a, much of an issue. So let's go ahead and take a look at the matte creation process. First thing I did is I ran it through a Lumic here, and that allowed me to select kind of all the, these dark areas and keep the white areas in place. And then I go ahead and I merge a black solid on top of all that and mask out the the bottom half in or the bottom half with the polygon. What I'm trying to do is garbage mat all this junk, right? This up here is fantastic. We like that. We don't like this down here. So I use a garbage mat with this polygon to mask out a black background that I overlay on top of the image. Then I also go ahead and merge this shot on top of black. So I've cleaned up all I've cleaned up all the crap down here. Okay, all right, so that gets us to this. Now we're gonna put this back on top of more black to fill in all these gaps, and that's what we end up doing right here. So now I'm left with this beautiful black and white image. And if we punch it down here, now we can see we used a channel Boolean node to create an alpha channel out of this whole process. So looks pretty dang good. And then you can see in the channel Booleans, I literally took the red foreground and made that the alpha channel. So that's how I, I was able to do that. Now we have an alpha channel of the image and that gets used to mask off the mountains as well as the background birds. If you look way back here, I've got birds in the background on my shot. When do I not have birds in the background? So you can see right about through here, they start coming out from behind the trees. So I'm using that same mat. If I go and move this up here, I'm using the same mat that I created. This one right here, this black and white image, alpha channeled. And that's going to go ahead and mask off my birds as they come into the frame. And they're just there to add some background uh, motion. They make it pretty interesting. I've shown you another video how I do my birds. i uh, link to it in the description below if you want to watch how we did that. And then we come in, we add the duck. Let's go and take a look at the duck. Uh, the duck I did inside a blender. 
following Ian Hubert's um, one minute tutorial on how to uh, add ducks and make ducks with a technique of projection mapping. So if we can see right here, here's my duck. There we go. And it's nothing fancy. It is literally a projection map duck. It looks atrocious, but it's good enough for what I need to. If I just go and play forward, you'll see kind of the animation here. And it just kind of swims around, a little rapid turn. We got some butt wiggle going on because duck butts are cool. Or duck tails, right? Woo woo. You yeah, these kids will know what I'm talking about. And it, I mean, it's bad. Like, it's horrible. If I go up to a top view and uh, look down at it here. Oops, let's see. Top. There we go. Like, that projection mapping is just horrible, but it's good enough for the shot. When you realize that it is like literally um, just in the background of a shot back here. In fact, if I can I select the duck, where's my duck? Well, there's the armature showing the duck moving. Yeah, there you go. You kind of get an idea. In fact, let's go to a wireframe mode. There, there's my duck. The little orange glows the duck in the shot. Like it's so far back there, it didn't have to be perfect. It just had to be good enough. And if we look in at it here, this is how it looks in motion as a wireframe. And you can see I've got the, the armature with a little bit of animation. That's literally how you do your animation there. So make your duck, render it out. I didn't bother doing any reflections or ripples or anything like that because I knew that that stupid duck would be so far into the background it really wouldn't matter. Nobody would notice. So we just dropped the duck on top of the image. Now let's take a look at how I made the reflection because if you look at the duck, you can see there's a reflection of it here in the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and uh, let's go ahead and pass through all those and then we'll pass through this one for now and this one as well all right so you got the, your duck this is literally the render dropped straight on top of the shot the next thing I want to do is go ahead and flip it upside down to create my reflection so I'm going to flip it with the transform node you can see I've got the flip selected and I merge that under it so if we go ahead and take a look at this we undo it. There it is. I've got a flipped version of the duck right underneath. Didn't have to do anything else with the shot. I flipped it, moved it up, good to go. Now I go ahead and I blur out the reflection. So if we make that that a visible, you can see we've got a softer reflection for the blur. I sharpened the entire thing up like crazy to help match the cell phone footage because you can see I got this really stark difference here. And this isn't just color contrast. This is sharpening because I shot this on the iPhone. A lot of sharpening on the iPhones. Run it through a color corrector to kind of match your your levels a little bit more and then finally we dump some grain over the top of it to really just help blend it in and help match the rest of the shot this too is tracked into the frame except this time i used uh some rocky points here and here they're about the same spot and that just allows me to make sure that the duck is going to move exactly the way it needs to and then finally we've got the fog and the mist let's go ahead and uh, scale this back to fit and take a look at what we got. We go ahead and view that final, and you can see that we've got the fog right there. The fog is literally just a fast noise node that I animated. I changed the uh, the seeth value on this, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, as I click through, you can see that my seeth rate changes. So that's literally just keyframed here at the beginning. There's keyframe number one, and I went to the end. I moved it a little bit, and I added another keyframe down there. Uh, in order to scale it up to cover my shot, because the shot does pan around up and down and side to side, I merged it over a background node that's got the alpha turned all the way down. And uh, I masked off certain sections of it too. I wanted the, the fog to appear. We're going back and take a look at the final shot here. In real life, like fog doesn't just appear straight down. And so if I kill this mask, you can see originally the fog comes all the way down, right? It just blocks off the entire frame. So what I did with the polygon mask is said, I only want the fog to appear in a certain area. And then I transformed the whole thing into place and we add it through another tracker node. In fact, it was the same tracker that we used to the duck or used for the duck and we get our final effect. And then finally, all we had to do is run it through the, the color correction page. I'm going to go ahead and kill my, my big color corrector node. This is my, and we'll kill this one here too. And then that one. So this is how it looked straight out of the composite from Fusion. 
I do a little bit of a, a light color correction, adding some contrast into the shot. I then tried to create a look, and then I added um, Dehancer Pro because I just I love the way it works. I love the halation that it adds. I love the film look that it adds. It's just really easy to work with and super cool. And then when all is said and done, you're left with a, a final shot that looks like this. All right, so just to recap, you can see that we started with our final shot and we just ran down the pipeline horizontally here. We added mountains in the background. We created a map for the mountains and for the birds. We put birds in there too. We added a duck to the foreground following in Hubert's tutorial, link in the description below if you wanna learn how to do that. And then finally we just added the fog on top of it. All in all, this shot really only took me about an hour to do. I'm not much of a modeler inside a blender. I learned uh, a lot from watching Ian's video, but I'm familiar enough with Blender. I was able to follow along and put it all together. Honestly, this duck was the longest part of the process. I spent maybe 10 minutes doing the rest of this, and I spent yeah close to an hour on the, on the stupid duck. But it really adds a lot to the shot, and I'm really happy I did it. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. I'm L Director. This is L Director Vision, and you've been watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget.